There's a story inside every smoke shop, with every cigar, and with every person. Come be a part of the cigar lifestyle at Boveda. This is Box Press. Welcome to another episode of Box Press. I'm your host, Rob Gagne, and today we are sitting in a field of tobacco at Florida Sun Grown Tobacco Farm. I have Jay Fifield from Boveda with me. And I also have Frankie Dranks. He is the Cigar and Spirit Ambassador over at Drew Estate. Thank you guys both for being here. You got it. Honored to be here. Just to give the audience a little idea of what does a day and the life look like for Frank? Uh, well, first of all, I'm honored to be to be here. I mean, obviously, we're at uh, Florida Barn Smokers, so it's, uh, it's a great day to be out uh, in Florida. It's a little warm. Yeah, uh, you're getting the brunt of it there. Hope you got um, your sunscreen I'm, I'm on. Beating up sweats, <laughs> yeah. Um, but just to give you a little little background, um, you know, I come from the the spirits spirits side of the business. Uh, I, I joined Drew Estate 2016, uh, working with uh, John personally, and um, this year uh, I hopped on as a cigar and spirits ambassador for Drew Estate. So I kind of have the uh, a really unique position uh, as a Drew Estate personality, um, which I've gone on the road. I just came back from Michigan, hitting a couple of cigar bars up there, uh, crafting some cocktails um, for for events, uh, same as here. And so I kind of have this dream job where uh, I get to play around with spirits and, and play around with cigars. I mean, I think things could be quite worse for, right, for me. Right. But uh, I really do enjoy um, our products and, and, and basically getting to experiment with uh, all different types of spirits and, uh, and cocktails and, and pairings. So if I have a tobacco shop and I'm also allowed to serve alcohol on premise, you might come in and help me pair some cigars with the alcohol that I have on premise so that I can give my uh, customers a better experience. Absolutely. I also host uh, uh, pairing seminars, but okay. they're they're kind of all different, you know, they kind of go all different ways. And we'll, we'll talk about uh, a little bit about, you know, what my concepts are with pairings and how they work in, oh. in our world. Perfect. Thank goodness, because we need some guidance here. So the whole idea here is to have Frank set up three different cigars with three different types of non-alcoholic and alcoholic drinks. For those of us out there who don't drink like myself, we'd always like to get some more points and more tips as to what we can be pairing our cigars with. We're also going to talk about the concepts. How do we start this? How do we avoid the pitfalls of having a bad experience? And then overall, just again, how do we get into it so that right away, we know what we're doing a little bit and we can expound on that and keep going with the whole experience. So let's get into it right away, Frank. What do we have kicking us off here? Well, we're going to kick off with the Tobacco Especial. We're doing a Toro Dulce uh, 6x52. Um, it's, no, it's an amazing cigar. Uh, if for, for you guys, I think most people have had an experience with it with a tobacco, and it's a great way to, uh, to start the day um, or really any time. Um, but we're starting with an, uh, an amazing Connecticut uh, shade wrapper, a um, little Sumatran binder on there, and a Nicaraguan filler. So it's it's uh, a lot of people think it's it's a very uh, mild smoke. I think it, it vacillates between mild and, and medium depending on the ring gauge and the size of the cigar that you're that you're uh, smoking at the time. You know, we lo- I personally love the four by thirty twos on the tobacco uh, dulce because they're just a, a great way to to pair with an espresso. So um, what I did today um, was to you know. I'm layering flavor upon flavor. So, so we're doing a coffee, uh, we're doing a coffee uh, drink for for those of us that are imbibing in, in alcohol, and I'm using a uh, a standard like coffee and, and milk cold brew uh, from Stoke, which is a, a really great product. And it's, you're just trying to layer flavor upon flavor. Um, for the alcoholic drink, I used a uh, a hometown product from Miami, where I'm from. We're using a Miami Club. Uh, Coffee, uh, Cuban coffee rum liqueur, so I just blended a little little coffee liqueur and a little of that cold brew. So hopefully, uh, so these two are going together to those make two the are alcoholic going to, drink. Right. So and then you're having that one Perfect. for the non-alc. So I want to do products that most people can uh, can get readily right. available. You know, sometimes yeah, I've seen this in the store. Yeah, you can get like too deep into the, into the the mixology right. world, and most people can't uh, replicate that yeah. at home. 
So leave that for your favorite bar, favorite bartender. Um, but you can definitely grab these products. Uh, and if I'm buying a bottle of this, um, like what's my cost? What am um, I going to be spending? I, I think that's about $24.99. $24.99. Uh, yeah. And I can make more drinks with this, right? Because right. it's a coffee liqueur. It's a coffee liqueur. So, you know, there's other coffee liqueurs, obviously, like Kahlua, which is a uh, another rum-based coffee liqueur. Um, they're they're a fantastic product. Everybody's had, you know, right. Kahlua. So it's Everybody's always good to have this. Some, some sort. So. Yeah, it's always good to have this in the in the cabinet. Yes, absolutely. Everybody's got everybody's got Kahlua in the cabinet somewhere. Right. You know, it's if it's not, you know, it's probably left over from when your parents are drinking White Russians back in the seventies <laughs> or when you were watching the dude the was in town. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> um, so everybody's got uh, some sort. If not, get some. It's it's a real great addition because you can um, you can just hit it with sometimes just soda water. And you're just getting a little coffee, like like oh. a coffee spritz, um, but it pairs uh, amazing with with rum or, like I said, in, in a white Russian where you're just doing cream and vodka. So right, um, perfect. Anyway, so, so how should we start out the? Should we start out by tasting the cigars, tasting the 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 drink, or or what do we? Anytime that you start with a cigar, especially one that you haven't had, you know, first of all, ad, you know, admire the construction of it. Um, you know, make sure that you get that. Uh, you know, you get that aroma coming off of the foot. That's that's really the, the best part of it, you know. And and really, and then you can enhance the aromas around. Uh, the next thing that that I always advise is what I like personally um, is go ahead and cut your cigars. And then after you, uh, you you've cut your cigar, um, take a cold draw. So you, you definitely want to get all the aromas from from the cigar on a cold draw. You want to get some air through it. You want to taste that leaf before you, you know, you ignite it. So it, it does change the complexity of the cigar once it's lit, one, once you start smoking it. But, you know, you really want that first, first uh, impact of the leaf on you, you know, through a cold draw. So I always say, hey, give it a cold draw before you, before you spark it up. Now, next thing you want to go through the process of toasting the foot, getting it lit the right way, making sure that that you've got all the elements that are ready to go. So want go guys, you can go ahead and do that. I'll probably I'll just talk through this part, right? All right. So All right, so you guys are got got that first uh, couple puffs in. First thing you notice is that sweet cap that's on there. Um, and then you start getting the flavors of the of the tobacco, and then you start picking up those coffee notes that are yeah. that are the signifying. I got that creamy flavor right away, and I noticed that this was a little bit shaggy foot, mm -hmm. so I really wasn't tasting the wrapper right away, which was kind of interesting because I got some more. Uh, I think not necessarily spice, but I got some more tobacco behind it right right away, which was interesting. I like that, but still very smooth and sweet right off the bat. I could yeah. take this down as a breakfast smoke on the regular. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. that kind of makes, you know, where, where we're headed, you know, makes sense because I think tobacco is, is a great way to start your day. You know, oh. if if not, then maybe, you know, if you're an underground guy, I think an underground, you know, shade is a great way to start a day as well. So they're, 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 they're mild, but they have, they're full of flavor. And I think that's, that's the starting point where, where I wanted to, to go with this. So what we have here, obviously, is uh, what I ask you to do now is just take a little sip of what you've got in front of you, and um, take a little sip. Just got a little, just a little great cold brew. Uh, mm. You've got a little cold brew and um, and liqueur. So you just we're just layering flavor upon flavor. So really so creamy, you know that kind of just it's really creamy coffee. Yeah. I don't know how else to explain it. What am I supposed to be explaining? Is this supposed to be more in depth than this? So, what, the, the idea. So the idea here is we're going to take one one aspect of of pairing is and that's the layering of flavor, All right? So we're just going to layer flavor upon flavor upon flavor. It's kind of like you know, like a chef, like a chef does. You know, you start to to you have your center uh, note, which is coffee. You know, so okay. we're. And the tobacco is, you know, in, in is infused with with coffee. Um, and then what we're trying to do is we're trying to emulate some of those flavors. So we're trying to layer a little bit of uh, the cold brew coffee on top of that, and we've got the rum, uh, the rum-based uh, coffee liqueur that we're layering on top of that. So now we're getting the entire 
uh, the entire mouth, the entire perception is now coffee over coffee over coffee, but it's coming to you in different ways. I almost think of it as uh, kind of like a relationship or marriage. The, the differences between the two or the layers, as you're saying, kind of strengthen the overall pairing as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you kind of get the, when, when we started, you got that sweet tip that, you know, kind of fades a little bit afterwards and you call it, we, you, your perception on it was creaminess and, and that's really just the, the blend of the tobacco and the sweet tip on your palate. And now you're getting a little bit of refreshing, you know, kind of every time you take a sip, um, you're getting a little refreshing, uh, you know, uh, sensation. It's cleaning your palate a little bit, you know, it's iced. So I, you know, I think for today we we, we do iced uh right. later on we might you know <laughs> in cooler weather we, we we might have like a hot coffee or you know. sure um but thank god it, you didn't bring the hot coffee yeah, thanks for not 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 today Ooh. so uh, so i figured that what we do is is refresh the palate so every time you're taking a sip you're kind of refreshing the palate you're kind of preparing it for the next wave of flavor so i thought the coffee flavors would cancel each other out honestly i thought i'd taste more tobacco as soon as I took a sip of the coffee and everything. But it's like you said, it's building upon itself instead of canceling it out. Right. I mean, it, coffee and tobacco, I mean, we're, we're talking about like two of the, the most uh, indigenous of, of products coming from the Americas. Uh, when, when we're talking about Nicaraguan uh, coffee that's used for the infusion in tobacco, you're, you're talking about uh, we can get into the finer points of what we call terroir, but I don't want to use that, that T word. It's very... Um, you know, it's, it's sometimes overused and sometimes a little douchey. What is terroir? <laughs> terroir is basically what what a plant, just like the plants we have behind us, they have a very signifying um, flavor based on where they're raised. So if you're talking about California grapes um, in oh, the so wine the industry, soil. it's the soil. The soil where they come from yeah. is what is really giving out most of the yeah. flavor. It, uh, always, always. Okay. Um, but we're talking about a cigar that has, you know, a, a blend of some Sumatran wrapper plus Connecticut shade. So we're not getting as much terroir, but we are sharing, uh, you know, this common DNA of Nicaraguan coffee um, and, and Nicaraguan filler. The sweetness has subsided from the, the cigar mm-hmm. as I drink more of the mm-hmm. coffee. I'm sure the coffee has a little bit of milk or some other sweetness in it that right. is helping uh, kind of balance that. Jay, how does your... I mean, obviously, my drink is very creamy, almost like a, like a cafe. What is it? Cafe leche. Um, cafe con leche, which is one of those uh, specialty tobaccos that you'll find, uh, you know, in certain certain spots. So if you find one, pick one up. Um, but a cafe con leche is just coffee and milk. Yeah. Um, so it'd be the equivalent of a cafe latte at your Starbucks. Yeah, that's what it kind of um, tastes like to me. Just cold. Yeah, or an, really or, or an iced coffee that you pick up somewhere else. You know, right. that just add a little cream or a little milk. Um, I, I like the, the cream aspect of it because it does, you know, layer a little bit of uh, a fat onto your onto your mouth. You know, it kind of like coats it a little bit and, and then it'll, wa- it'll wash away. And that's also part of like the cleansing process. Jay, what yeah. is the alcohol? I think I would say very similar to yours. Um, creamy. Alcohol maybe masked a bit. I mean, it's not hitting you, right? It, and I don't think that's the intention right. by any means. No, as a liqueur, it's just there for as a flavoring agent. Sure. So you're, you're getting um, a little... Ours compared to um, the non-alcoholic one uh, is just going to have a little extra layer uh, of, of coffee uh, liqueur. You know, and if you want to just... If you want to smell that bottle, you can kind of get the idea of... Uh, of what you're having, uh, no, no, the, uh, the 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 liqueur bottle. So you you may want to take a, take a little whiff of this. So it's just, that's just you know a little sweetness yeah. and, and um, probably like more of an espresso type thing. It, it's just it's just a another way to add a little extra layer. Yeah, you know what? Because we're we're not trying to be. We're not trying to compete, and, and there's room, there, there's a time and place to compete for flavor, but um, right now what we're trying to do is just layer. I dropped a bottle of coffee liqueur when I was a kid, so that uh, smell was very familiar. That just kind of, it almost reminded me of molasses, like the smell of molasses. Right. That, that syrupy, kind of rich, I don't know, roasted kind of smell. Well, you know, um, it is, that it does have a rum base, and, you know, we'll get to the rums later. And um, 
you know, that, that molasses smell is, is just a byproduct of like the sugar that you add back into a liqueur. So as we were building upon, we're in this particular pairing, we're building on flavors. If I'm going to just kind of try to get my feet wet in this whole pairing spirits or non-spirited drinks with cigars, what are the main building blocks I need to be thinking about? Um, the first one is uh, knowing knowing what you like. That's the, you got to know what you like as a, as a starting so point. So I give you, I like medium and particularly spicy cigars. So I like the medium cigar, but it's spicy and has a lot of pepper to it. Mm-hmm. What would I be reaching for as far as a liqueur or, or, or a drink, a spirited drink? Um, if it's a spirited drink, I, w- I would say that you 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 may want to start to lean towards something. Uh, and there's two schools of thought, you know, that that you that you match intensity of flavor. So, you know, if you get a, a, a more full bodied, medium to full bodied cigar that you're going to want like a, you know, a, a peated scotch or, or or a heavy bourbon or something along those lines or a high rye bourbon. So you're just, you know, trying to compete. So so you match um, intensity. So it's like, okay, if it's a medium plus or medium, you know, real right. peppery, then I go real kind of medium on the scotch, but also has the backbone of like the peat or the pepper or the spice. Exactly. The other school of thought is re- remembering that your palate does reach a point of exhaustion and that point of exhaustion comes a lot quicker when you have a full body or medium plus. So you may want to pair, start to look at pairing with an item that's going to be um, either a, a palate cleanser or or has a sweetening agent that lets, the pa- that lets your palate run a little bit longer before it gets exhausted. Okay, so with the peppery cigar, then I would go with a sweeter alcohol or a sweeter bourbon or a sweeter scotch right. so, so that I can kind of get that break in between puffs and also complement that that spice spiciness absolutely and, and we'll get there when we get to the sun grown Perfect. Um, because that's kind of the concept but you basically there's two schools of thought like you know um th- will your palate handle that intensity and or do you want to you know it's, it's, it's the old complement versus contrast okay so it's really up to you my my suggestion is always experiment Experiment because there could be a day when you want to compete, and there's one you know some days that you want to contrast. You know. Got it. So, but before I start experimenting, just because I get a little, you know, intense about these things, as far as like, am I doing it right? Am I not doing it right? Are there any things that I need to know to avoid so that I'm not like totally disappointed and ruin the whole experience for me and maybe my friends? Um, well, I, I would say is you, uh, you won't know that, you know, to, to give you the political answer, <laughs> you gamble. won't know that until you, uh, until you experience it, first of all. So, but as, as a general rule of thumb, um, there, there are, you know, there are spirits which obviously are on the lighter, more uh, f- fragrant side. Um, they, they're either botanical in nature, like a gin. Um, like a tequila, tequilas are great pairings, mezcals as well, because they do have a, a different, you know, different nature than something that's wood aged. So there's, you know, we can go down that rabbit hole of wood age versus non wood age. Right. And then finding out where, where your palate lies with that. And then looking at, um, and looking at, uh, you know, when we get to the wood age, you know, is it wood or do you like, you know, scotch, you know, do you like, um, American whiskeys, and if you like American whiskeys, do you like bourbon or rye or sure. a, or both? Um, and if you like rum, uh, the region where that rum is from is it a Spanish style rum? Is it a is it a British Navy style rum? Is it a Jamaican rum? Is it a rum from Barbados? Do you think if I'm coming at this from the liqueur side or the spirited side, that I should really know? Obviously, I would know then. You know what I'm what I like to drink, what the flavor profile of it is. You know, sweet, spicy peppery, whatever. And then if I have that knowledge, should I walk into my tobacconist, my local tobacconist and say, here's the drink that I like and here's why I like it because it has these flavors. And now either show me cigars that have those flavors or show me cigars that would complement those flavors. 
I, w- I would say that's a great starting point. Number one, no know, okay. knowing what you like. Um, same as if you know what you like as a cigar, you can definitely start to you, know, you can go in um, to your you know to your local liquor store hopefully or or get on a, a blog or stuff and and they'll you know they kind of guide you as to to uh, what what pairs well in that family. I mean some people are not you know you asked earlier. You know where don't you want to go? Um, if you don't like peated scotch, you know don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Um, no matter what you're smoking, because you're just you know. But that's based off your personal palate, not per se. You're gonna ruin a cigar and alcoholic uh, right. pairing if you do this. It's more or less you're gonna ruin it for you yourself because you just don't like that. Right. Okay. And, and, or, you may actually discover that, wow. I don't like peated scotches, but with this cigar, the flavors all of a sudden work for me. Oh, so wow. there, there is always discovery to be now had. Now we're back to the gambling table. Now yeah. we just have to go for it. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of times, in, you know, in, in what I do, people, you know, kind of want this hard, fast rule of like if, you know, if you're smoking a, a Liga, you got to have rum with it. And if you're, you know, smoking an underground, you got to have a, you know, bourbon with it. And if so it really, it, it's a lot more complex and by the same token, uh, a lot simpler um, as you as you start going down that rabbit hole. Yeah, you brought up a good point. There are some general guidelines to follow, but the sensory experience, it's very subjective. Everybody's got their own opinions and what you think mm-hmm. might be right might not necessarily be right for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our, our palates are like, our, like an individual thumbprint. You know, what he's tasting is may be similar to what you're tasting, may be similar to what I'm tasting, but by no means are they exactly the same. And we're, we're always hamstrung by our ability to work with adjectives, you know, and, and our experiences, you know. So when somebody says it smell, you know, it's, it's like earth, you know. So what was the last time, you know, you, you tasted earth? You know, right. Maybe you, four or five. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so if you've got a so really great key. memory, you may recall what that is, but that's actually, you actually remember the aroma and the aroma ends up on your palate. And then, so you don't actually have to stick your mouth in dirt for us to understand the term earthiness, you know, oh, the, the taste is earthy, right. you know, so tastes like mulch. I don't know. Right, I, I right. don't recall the last time I was munching on mulch, but, <laughs> you know, but those are, those are some of the things. So we are, first of all, we're limited to our experiences with, with uh, different, different items. You know, when, when you say, you know, it's got that smell of fermented tobacco. So unless you've been in the factory and, you, you know, you, you smell the pilon and you grab it and you put it in, if you don't know that reference point, it's very hard for you to, uh, to understand. Are there things we should be doing at home to, like, build our adjectives that we can use or our sensories, like smelling spices, tasting spices, stuff like that? that you abs- would abs- absolutely. First, you know, uh, go into your go into your spice rack, you know, and hopefully, you know, it's not one of those spice racks where we keep spices and they go old. Like, you know, right. this is a, some clove I've had for seven years, you know. So right. try to get the uh, fresh stuff. Try to get the fresh stuff. Um, and, what are the and, top three that I should start with? Um, I, I, I think, first of all, I think everyone mostly recognizes cinnamon. Okay, so right. cinnamon's on there. I think most people recognize nutmeg. Nutmeg? But a lot of people can confuse nutmeg to cinnamon. So oh, so knowing the difference, knowing really the understanding difference, right. the difference. Um, every, pretty much uh, universally, most people understand vanilla. Okay, got you know, vanilla. So, like liquid um, vanilla, right? Liquid vanilla. Got it. And also not, the, uh, not the false stuff. Get the real stuff. Yeah, and, but even, even the liquid vanilla smells different than a vanilla bean. Okay, so then get a vanilla bean? So if you've got a vanilla bean, you know, they're quite expensive these days, but if you can get a hold of vanilla bean, smell a vanilla bean. It, it's a very unique, unique okay. experience. So um, clove. Clove, got it. You know, those, you know, we, we pretty much smell clove one time a year when we're doing a baked ham, right. and we never see it again. But but those those are, those are you know, just an example of some spices, and I'm sure you've got a bunch of different things in, in in the uh, in the cabinet that you're used to you, the used to thing, experiencing. The other thing that's always in cigars too, as far as pepper, is white pepper versus black pepper. Really understanding the difference between those two, I think, is helpful as well. Right. So I mean, most people, you know, you find like some peppercorns, you know. So understanding, first of all, 
the 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 odor of pepper is very different than the taste of pepper. Right. So you you know like pepper almost has a um a little bit of uh, what I call a, an acrid taste to it if you crunch it. You know. What's acrid again? Um, it's like sour bitter. Okay. You know sour bitter. You know so. You know, if, if you put a peppercorn in your mouth and, and you, you know, you, you chew on it, all of a sudden you kind of like, well, that's kind of like, and then you'll get like the little bit of heat that it has on it. And then that's the flavor you recognize. Once it's ground, it's it's definitely a, a very different experience. Same thing as white pepper. White pepper tends to be a little little more mild. Okay. Pink peppercorns have their own, you Pink know, peppercorns you know, too. Have their own uh, flavor. I haven't seen that in a cigar review. This you know. tastes a lot like pink peppercorns. Uh, well, I, I, I want to see that, Charlie. <laughs> Shout I, out to I, you, I buddy. think when you get to those spots, we, we, we get a lot of, you know, like a lot of guys that review spirits and, and, you know, review cigars. And there's a lot of commonality with that. He goes, oh, I, you know, I, I smell, you know, aged peppercorn, <laughs> you know, three years and from the three back of like, aged. you know, so, you know. <laughs> I got a like, collection of peppercorns. They've been aging. And and, and, and and some people do have a super palate, which is right. which is great. You More know? power to them. They challenge all of us normal people out there. They do, but but going going back to going back to that, I think that that you your your perception of flavor is uh, is limited by your experiences. So the more experiences you have, the wider uh, ability you are to describe. That's you know that's the first thing. So um, the more things that you taste, the more things that you smell. Um, and repeatedly, because it's like training your palate to like recognize these things, you you start to say, okay, great, you know, Got it. you know. I think we we overuse the term leather. You know, it's like you yeah, know, right. You know, but I don't. What kind re- of leather? Corinthian leather yeah, or maybe uh, cattle leather from Naga Texas? Hide. <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, but so so we we do use those, and and we know that that's not a flavor. That's actually an aroma, you know. But you know, you do smell and taste with the same. Uh, with the shaved ner- nerve endings, I mean, we have we have basically, if you were to look at an outline, you know, like a, right. a, a we have a something called a trigeminal nerve that goes through our our uh, little opening in our skull. It's our eyes, our smell, and our taste, and and all these all come back into to our one. brain through the same uh, nerve uh, platform. So you do pick up things. So things that you smell will actually start to impact your taste buds as well. So you don't have to chew on any leather to perceive leather. So right. they're, they're, they're combined. So aroma and taste, those, those are those ways that you can train yourself to become a better taster. Perfect. Frank, let's introduce this next pairing. What is the cigar that we're going to be smoking? You've got the uh, Acid Plush, which is a new release this year um, in the purple line of, uh, of the Acid products. So... Um, I think it's a, it's a fantastic, fantastic addition, um, as the croqueta is as well, you know, coming in the purple line as well. And um, So this is new to the market here. This is new to the market. Right. So uh, like anything else, um, you're going to uh, first take a look at the cigar, see, uh, you know, feel it. Um, it's beautifully wrapped. We've got a Brazilian Matafina wrapper on there, Maduro. So it's it's a beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautifully wrapped cigar. Um, the next thing you want to do is take a take a whiff. You know, so you always get want to make sure that uh, all your everybody always takes a, a smell of the wrapper first. But the reality is, you want to get all the all the odors, um, all the aromas coming from the foot of the cigar because you're getting the full blend there. What what are you what, what are you picking up here? It smells herby. Herby. Absolutely. Yeah. So great. Great perception. You, you you're you're gonna smell some herbs. You're gonna start. Uh, you're gonna pick up, obviously, little what we call botanicals, which are a blend of blend of herbs and spices as well. So, um, the next thing we want to do, like we talked about, was take a cold draw. So get some air going through there. This is not as uh, sweet. This is very herby, botanically, almost gin, Absolutely. gin-like. Ah, good call because. Um, what we're going to do is, first of all, um, just to finish off um, the Maduro wrapper, and we have a Nicaraguan binder, Nicaraguan filler. So um, out of the, the new lines, of as, as this one has come out, um, what you're going to perceive is you're going to perceive a lot more uh, true tobacco. You know, so for the, for the Cuba Cuba 
um, and Blondie smokers. This one's going to be, um, I guess, more in line with with our toast, um, which was a which is a cigar that we put in the acid line, where you're you're really the botanicals are only enhancing. It's, it's sort of like uh, you know adding a little bit of extra to this to the natural uh, flavors of the tobacco that sure. are in here. I'm getting on the cold draw. I'm getting like those cinnamon gummy candies. At old time, like uh, old time candy shops, yeah, and then like a those little bit of red finish. dots, you know, like yeah. at the very, very beginning, you know, so what they call there's those little red, uh, red hots, mm-hmm. you know, but without the spice, you know. Yeah, it's not the spice; it's more or less the 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 kind of cinnamon candy flavor, and then it kind of finishes with a little bit of black licorice for me, just a little bit. Yeah, that same kind of note that black licorice follows with. Right. Well, you know. Um, and, and it kind of follows a pattern of, of licorice. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, licorice being a, uh, a root candy, you know, coming from uh, uh, syrup yeah, that's made candy. with root. Yeah, so a root candy. Yeah. So, you, you, you know, so you might perceive like root, root beer, uh, sarsaparilla. I'd be good um, with this. Sarsaparilla root, which is, is, is root beer. You know, so if you know what sarsaparilla is, you're like, okay, I understand it. If you don't, then if you've never spelled rat, you have. It's it's um, root beer, the base of root beer, um, little cream soda ish. Um, you might actually pick up a little bit of what, what I what I think it's it's that little the little crossover, you know, uh, a little Dr Peppery, you know. Oh, now that you said that, you know, so but that pe- that yeah. finish that Dr Pepper has on yeah. my. Especially my nasal palate. So I'm I'm picking up Mr. Pib, not Dr. Mr. Pib. Uh, Mr. Pib. <laughs> the, the old. He's formula. a Mr. Pib fan, yeah, so, not a Dr. Pepper fan. Um, but but these are things like first of all, like when when people ask, you know, like you know what what should I be picking up? And it's like the reality is the minute the minute you say something, you know, like you, you're I picking know. up a uh, you, you're picking up a, a cheeseburger, like oh yeah. <laughs> I got cheeseburger all over this. Um, no, so so you can actually, you know, from where I'm at, you can actually start to over influence, you know, um, right. what you're perceiving, um, because there really is no you perceive what you perceive. So before you start sharing what you're perceiving on a cigar, first of all, go go through it yourself. Go go through that checklist of, of what it is you like, what it is that you're picking up, and then compare notes. Sure. You know, because what's going to happen is if you start right off the bat, it's um, all your taste, right? Yeah, you're like, yeah, I've got I've got like you know uh, I've got some you know aged orange in here and you know some uh, some orange spice and these things so you can't influence the other person it just gets compromised right off the bat so go ahead and um and take the opportunity to light it and i'll talk a little bit about um what i made today so you know you um you said you you uh you you thought it would uh, pair well with with the gin, and and so uh, and I, I think our acid cigars pair amazingly well with gins. So what I did here was uh, I've got a little Roku gin, which is uh, from Centauri, and uh, gin's gonna you know the the signifying mark of gin is its juniperness, right? Um, we've started to produce a lot of different gins now. Uh, the London Dry Style was a super juniper forward gin, and we started to start uh, deviating from it. A lot of great products are coming along, and this is one of them. This is uh, Roku. Roku has about six different uh, botanicals in addition to juniper, um, from green tea uh, to uh, I think they have a, a yuzu peel, which is yuzu's uh, citrus aspect to it so i really like the the concept of of starting off with gin as a base spirit um the next thing i went with was a uh, little kombucha you know these things are becoming yes. really really popular now so this is a blueberry mint kombucha by what's um, the brand name hum this one is hum yeah i've seen that in stores and so uh and then obviously doing a riff on a on a gin and tonic and so um i've got a little uh q uh tonic to to pair with it so okay. I, I made a little gin and tonic uh for you with a little blueberry uh mint kombucha you've got a, a fresh mint leaf that we pulled right off of the farm oh um, nice yeah this is isn't a swarm of bees after us is actually yeah. uh, got drone footage little, going little on drone. above head if you hear that hum so what you have is you've got a you've got com- the blueberry mint kombucha 
and with the tonic with the tonic and what, I've never thought of doing that for non-alcoholic it still gives me some flavor and then the tonic as well is more like a gin and tonic right. and I used uh, it's it's like a little it's a it's called a Paloma syrup um, which is just a little bit of uh, hopped grapefruit it's this re- real cool product that uh, that we have available but okay. you can use a, a little bit of simple syrup because you just want to hit just enough to bring up the sweetness so it's balanced so it's not super super gin forward or any of the other flavors and and above all above all things when we're when we're tasting something and we're we're smoking something we're trying to achieve balance you know okay. it's really the key point you know trying to achieve balance between uh between flavors so same concept in a in a drink so um gentlemen cheers, cheers. So this is more on the refreshing side, obviously, oh, completely yeah. refreshing. And we're trying to match, um, you know, the, the botanical nature of what's in purple. But purple, again, is now becoming a more, this, uh, the plush line is more tobacco. So you really are picking up tobacco. I was going to say, the, this is not as sweet as some of the other acids. It's not, it's, it's not sweet. That's that's the one thing. So if you're, uh, if you're one of those people that thinks that the, the acid line is completely all sweet, um, tobacco infused products. Um, I would uh, beg you to, to tr- give Plush a try. You're gonna see like the high grade tobacco that we're that we're using. Um, it's got a great, great f- you know aroma to it, and it's got a great flavor. Once you you know once you go through your retrohale and and all those I you know ways that you start to pick up flavors on a cigar. And what we're doing here is we're just layering. But not so much. It's like we were heavy layering on the first pairing. Yeah. On the second pairing, we're just trying to now uh, work. We're layering some different flavors. But what I'm trying to do is as you get through this cigar, you'll realize that you do need to refresh your palate more. It's, it, this is, um, I would say, um, probably straight out medium to me, to, sure. to, to my taste. You know, you might say, hey, it's uh, mild to medium. And, you know, everyone has their own perception of, of how they see or how they perceive the the body of a cigar. So in this case, for me, I say this is like dead set medium. So um, I don't want to get too sweet or too uh, or too spirit forward. Kind of just lay in the balance. I definitely taste the blueberry and the mm-hmm. mint in this drink. So I kind of like that going with that uh, with the cigar itself. At first, that kind of cinnamon note that I thought I was tasting, that cinnamon candy note with that kind of rooty licorice or, or root beer backing, it's playing well. I think the mint is really complementing that rootiness and then that cinnamon sweetness and then that blueberry sweetness for me were very, very complimentary. But yet, like you said, it makes me want to pick up the drink more. This cigar does. Right, so makes me want to pick it up a lot more. You would serve this in, in, a, in a Collins glass. So a What's lot a Collins of glass? Uh, Collins glass is the tall glass. Um, oh, it's going to be about, you know, ice anywhere glass. between yeah, 9 to 11 ounces. It's kind of thin. Yep. So, uh, and why that? When, when um, th- this type of drink wa- is called a long drink, so it's it's a base spirit and a lengthener. So uh, where well, you have an effervescent uh, component to it. So as, uh, as a rum and coke, most of us have had a rum and coke. So that is uh, considered a long drink. It's just... Because you don't want your nose too far into that glass to get that effervescent in, um, or no? What you're tr- really trying to do is uh, is let let the effervescence work on the glass. You know, as you're talking about surface area, you uh-huh. know. So you know, I, I would tell you, you know, go home and, and put coke in a, in, a, in a big glass, you know, big rocks glass uh, or old fashioned glass, and then put one in in a long. You're, it's going to work more. It's yeah, gonna be more. The the, the, uh, the the bubble actually has to travel a lot further. Um, so the drink stays, uh, it stays, uh, carbonated okay. a little bit longer. Gotcha. Than, um, so it all matters. So yeah. Now we could spin off into glassware if we really wanted to, but that's a different episode. Okay. Yeah. Today we, we work with uh, five ounce, <laughs> uh, plastic. So, right. but, um, but cheers. Well, I'm really liking the gin. Typically the clear spirits, they get lost in my experience mm-hmm. at least with cigars and overpowering or the gin being underwhelming with the drink, but I think with the combination, the kombucha and the mint, it just yeah, has great, great flavor to it. Um, I think a gin and tonic and even, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big always proponent for, for keeping the palate refreshed as much as possible. You know, um, 
I know most of us, you know, you smoke cigars all day. Your palate does get exhausted, so you need stuff uh, as as you go through your normal day. You know, you start with your palate very, very clean in the morning. Um, you, if you really want to want to try something, you want to hit. Um, you want to hit it in the morning. If you want to try something new, your 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 perception right. will be uh, heightened heightened at a, at a level that you can't you know you can't match throughout the rest of the day because then you hit your first few cups of coffee, and then you hit lunch, and then you hit you know you know another cup of coffee or a couple drinks, and Jay, by the end of the day, it's kind of uh, y- your palate has worn itself down. Jay, since my drink is primarily got the blueberry and mint kind of flavor going on it, what is the gin doing for the drink? Is it are you adding? Are you seeing those other botanicals that are in the flavor at all? You tell me. Well, hey, for, this is your experience, man. Yeah, no. Well, it's, well first I of mean, all, I, I would say, like he's saying, when once he starts explaining what right. it's tasting like, I'm listening to you. I'm like, oh, blueberries. Yeah, I'm kind of picking up on that. The mint. It's just like a, an overall super refreshing experience and tasty. So, what what, 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 what I would what I would what I would tell you is uh, first start by um, you know by smelling it. So um, to start there, understanding what 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 that smells like and what that tastes like by itself, and you know I I would invite you to do the same. I mean, whether or not you drink, you can always still perceive. So yeah, and I've, I've maybe broke my nose a few too many times to pick up that? on certain what's smells. What's the sharp? <laughs> what's the sharp smell in gin? The sh- the the sharp smell and the sharp taste in gin is juniper. Juniper. So these are juniper berries. So you know you, you might come across them. And they're they're the they're the, the the nature of of of, of what, um, London gin, London dry style gin is, um, and it's the one that most people are familiar with. And then there's a whole story of of gin, how it derive, you know, how it is a uh, Geneva is actually, uh, where it comes from, and it's not, you know, it's a it's you know the old Dutch courage is, um, this was taken to uh to england they they devised their style of it it kind of took over the world as the british empire did so that sure. is the one we recognize um in the u.s we start we used to make a gin called old tom that was the old tom style and it was actually more akin to the old geneva old geneva was just less um less juniper forward you know the british dry style pushed juniper to the front of it so if you taste one of the older brands you can kind of get this big juniper kick which is i think amazing but now we're going back to experimenting with different uh different items that are layering um you know on top of that bringing the juniper down adding some you know more more lemon peel in this case you know they're they're adding uh yuzu peel they're adding uh tea leaf um so all these are starting to 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 round out the flavor so now gin becomes very approachable and quite delicious and in this case quite refreshing very refreshing and after every sip the cigar tastes different than when I'm just smoking the cigar it kind of changes and then once I take another sip again it starts all over again with some different flavors I, I just really I enjoy out of the plush the, the fact that, that we're getting um, this great tobacco you know this great like what we would say it's a it's just a great balanced cigar it's right. plush you know it's plush all right frank what is our next pairing here we have the florida sun grown you have the florida sun grown so uh this is uh we're sitting here in the field where uh where one of the major components of this cigar whoa we're gonna attacked here but uh <laughs> little bug life yeah, out here yeah it's it's love bug season so yeah. we gotta deal with it um so this is this is the field where, where jeff planted the is florida tobacco that's that's using the florida sun grown so um just an amazing cigar so like anything else that we're, we're gonna run through it here um you're going to uh take a look see uh feel the wrapper feel the consistency of the cigar um you're going to uh to look at um, the construction, which I think is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And then the next thing you want to do is obviously, you know, want to, want to get the aroma on it, you know, see what you're starting to perceive, um, on there. And, um, it's, it's kind of earthy and barney. What do you got? I was saying the same. <laughs> yeah. But you said it first and... <laughs> 
So uh, you guys are, are pretty much, you know, like, uh, you know, as, as a general rule, yes, you know, you start to perceive uh, that the term earthy, you know, and born because most people do know what those uh, aromas are. So the next thing I would say is now take um, take your uh, do a cold draw, you know, get some air through it, get some air flowing through there. Um, what do you got now? I don't want to say just yet. All right, almost All right. almost raisiny. I don't know if yeah. that's completely wrong, but there was this texture of sweetness, but not a lot, and then f- fermented. Kind of like, I don't know, like syrupy, but not not okay. sweet syrupy. All right. So now, moment of truth, light your cigar. And so uh, with the FSG, we have the Brazilian Modafino wrapper. Um, this is like a super duper willy blend. Um, I think it's an, an amazing cigar. Um, Honduran binder. And then you have uh, the fillers, a blend of Nicaraguan leaf. And what we got behind this, which is the Corojo, uh, the FSG Corojo 99. So um, this leaf is cured here. It's uh, when uh, the the tour group goes on later, they're going to run through it. You're going to see it in the barn. You're going to see how, you know, they go through the the drying process um, and then how they're going to bind it. It's going to make its way down. You know, we're going to bail it. It's going to make its way down to Nicaragua to uh, for the fermentation process and the aging process. So that's, uh, you know, it's, it's all, um, if you've never been to a cigar safari, hopefully we'll, we'll get those up and running very soon. You, you start to get the entirety of the process of, of making a tobacco. Uh, it doesn't happen from one season to another. Um, you must age it. There's... It must ferment it. It takes it takes its own while. We're we're dealing with an agricultural product that changes uh, year to year. There's definitely a spice on my tongue. There's a there's there's a part of that that's right in the center of my palate. I don't want to say too much about pepper because I don't feel like it tastes a lot like black pepper, but it's it's a different kind of spice mm-hmm. right down the middle of my tongue. And then when I retrohale, it gets more sharp and peppery. How about you? Yeah, mine's ripping right through the top of my nostrils. Some spice. It's not like overly powering, right. but um, it's certainly kind of the, the dominant factor. So, as you start to, you know, and you know, going back to under, you know, helping people understand that, you know, cigar does have, you know, its, it's three lives: its first, third, its middle, and its, and its finish. Um, and the flavors compound with with intensity and with smoke, and also the actual the blender you know how he's decided to construct that cigar so you get those flavors all along the way what i wanted to do drink wise now as you start to get that pepper note um we will call it a pepper note for now but we can call it like an intense spice uh flavor on there and and you do get that earthiness that comes through on the cigar and it's kind of like enveloping your entire mouth now right so we would say this has got like a very big mouth feel yes you know so when you say that, maybe we should have touched on this earlier, a big mouth feel. Do you want to just quickly explain body um, as it relates to cigars and drinks? Um, well, in in cigar in in drinks, there's two two schools of thought as as opposed to uh, when we describe body to a cigar. You know, where we can describe. Um, I think we, we we put it on one scale. You know, mild, medium, and full. You know. Um, but is but flavor and body are actually two different components. So something can be um, medium bodied, but actually um, or medium flavor and actually light bodied, which is it's got its intense flavor. It's in your mouth and it, you know, uh, it very quickly dissipates. Yeah, this you know? is lingering for a while. So let's refer to body as as how long, you know, it lingers because you can actually have something that's quite mild. But lingers on your palate a little bit longer. I think tobacco is one of those where you can, you still got that tobacco-ness, you know, right. going on in your palate. I think this is like, a, you know, this is medium, medium, you know, where you got medium flavor and then medium intensity or, or body. And I think when we get to um, this is more the intense. FSG, it's actually like 
uh, flavor wise, it's not like a it's it's not you know a gut buster. It, it's actually no. really rich and, and flavorful, but not overpowering. But once it's in your in your mouth, now you go wow, it's it's full. You yeah, know? And, compared and to the stays. acid, it's yeah. a lot uh, more prominent of that that spice flavor that I was saying. Right, and but once you take that puff and you get it going. It's like it stays, you know, it feels like it's still in your mouth even after, exactly. you, after you've exhaled. Um, it's got at least a 30 second stay on my palate. So as we get more intense with this, um, as we keep moving along in the cigar, what I want to do was to pair, um, and just going back to your question, to pair a cocktail with it. And so cocktails tend to have a different, um, a different uh, use of the term body. They're actually, the term is called spirit forward. So, you know, if they're more spirit forward, you actually are picking up more of the base spirit in okay. the cocktail itself. So it's kind of like we would call it boozy, you know? Okay. So it's so more boozy or a little more spirit boozy. forward. Um, spirit forward. Uh, something that's uh, like our last cocktail was refreshing, you know? So that kind of lies in a different, yeah. you know? That was definitely the last one. The gin and tonic one was not spirit right. forward. I didn't try that, but I mean, even what you paired up for me was not super strength or strong so um what we have here um for this cocktail and for yours what i want to do is uh, just make a classic old-fashioned so a classic old-fashioned um you know going back to uh the, the 1800s um it's just uh base spirit um sugar water and bitters so what i used this uh, on this one was a diplomatico um reserva it's a venezuelan rum um a blend of uh of molasses rum, a molasses base rum and sugarcane honey rum. I'll go into that later. Wow. Um, from Venezuela, it's a great, um, has a sweet profile on it. Um, really great rum. For the non-alcoholic, uh, I, I actually used unsweet tea, right, which is really rich in flavor as well. Um, for the sugar component of it, um, I used a, a little simple syrup. Uh, Demerara simple syrup. Demer- Demerara is raw sugar. Okay. Um, you know, basically you dissolve it in water, you know, one to one. Um, so you have the same simple syrup in it as a sweetening agent. And then you've got uh, and a little bit of aromatic bitters um, as a finishing component. And you, you have them as well. They're very, you know, it does have an, a, a, like an infinitesimal amount of, uh, of alcohol, but that's just to enhance right. the, the flavor. So um, I would say... Take take a drink. Cheers. Cheers. So what uh, I'm trying so the, the the issue there is, as this gets more uh, intense, now I'm bringing up the intensity of the cocktail. So now this is a, a more intense cocktail than, than the previous two that we've had. We're trying to bring it up to the level um, to match to use your term, okay, body. You know, so we're trying to match body for body. So what was the cinnamon flavor that I got out of this? Okay, the cinnamon flavor on that is uh, two components. That's the uh, the aromatic bitters on it, which is a, it's a blend of like baking spices and a, and a few other, okay. uh, you know, that are infused in Where alcohol. Where would I get that? Just at a store? Just um, yeah, you can bitters? actually find them at, at any liquor store or okay. some supermarkets carry them so okay. and is it a particular flavor or is it just general um, aromatic bitters well the the most popular one you're going to find is one called angostura okay. bitters and i think mo- most most grocery stores have them and that's um, exactly what would be similar to this it would be the closest yeah cuz there's flavored bitters out there too right yes uh, the you know the, the the bitter market right now is amazing cuz there's so many options that's really cool for non-alcoholic uh watchers out there i mean you can start to now have like a little library of things that you can add to your drinks right now remember bitters bitters do mean have a uh do have an alcohol component but it's very very small right so it'd be like drinking a non-alcoholic right and and what you're doing is you're putting two dashes you know just to give the flavor exactly you know so you can you can actually make yourself a tonic and hit it with some some bitters and uh you're gonna have a very very incredibly light abv cocktail um, th- this is a more intense cocktail for us. And for you, um, what you're having is just uh, creating a, uh, you, and you can create your own flavored syrups and, and add them to your tea to create different, different flavor profiles. So you can, you're having like, you know, like a, a faux old fashioned. 
wonderful. It's really great. Like you said, intensity matches. When I when I pull on the cigar now, that that overwhelming kind of spice component that hit my tongue all over was a little bit more muted after the drink now. Mm. And I'm tasting other aspects of the cigar, what they are exactly. I'm still working on that. <laughs> you, you can you're allowed to say leather. <laughs> now that I I had the drink. And then drew the cigar again. That raisin flavor came up more out. What about you, Jay? Hundred <laughs> percent. In the regard that, so cigar still intense, tingling through mm-hmm. as your the retrohale and just on the tongue. But once you take a sip of that drink, kind of the sugars and sweetness mm-hmm. mellow things out, and it has a nice complement. Very different tastes, but similar right. body. Exactly. I'd have to say that I prefer. Smoking cigars with a paired drink. Um, I think most people do. I think you you need to have something that um, that that obviously enhances the experience. But I haven't been doing that for like the last I don't know two years. I've been ma- mainly drinking with water. You know, just something to cool my palate a little bit. Sure. But I would. I'm definitely now challenged <laughs> to come up with some more things, some more. Just different ways to right. experience cigars because this is a whole new level that I'm really, really enjoying. I'm sitting in the middle of a tobacco field, so that definitely helps. But this is this is night and day. Like this is bringing my cigar experience to another level that I haven't had in like two years. Well, it's all it's to me. It's all part of it. Um, depends on when we're smoking, right? If you're smoking just to kind of like concentrate on 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 the flavors in that cigar then you're going to work to, like, I would say, have something very muted, you know, have uh, um, a water, um, have a soda water, you know, just to kind of cleanse your palate so you can kind of, like, focus on what that cigar is. And then once you do that and you understand that cigar, now you can start looking at where where you go um, with with a complementing or contrasting uh, either spirit or or cocktail or or non-alcoholic cocktail. I'm a, you know, we don't right. call those cocktails, but it's a non-alcoholic beverage. Right. And I think you've shown you don't need to overcomplicate things. It can really be pretty simple. I mean, up until this point, as far as my pairings go, I'm drinking an IPA or a bourbon. But here, I mean, you throw in just two or three components to a drink, and it can change the game remarkably, and it's delicious. And there's uh, there's some great spots uh, all over um you know, mixology is now becoming a big thing. You know, the, the, the right. term maybe maybe five years ago was on no one's radar. Um, now mixology is something that people are, are talking about all the time. Um, and, and it's a good thing because what, what, what that world is trying to do is really enhance the experience for the, the cocktail drinker. And right. what they've done is they've created, um, you know, uh, house, house-made syrups, uh, unique uh interpretations of classic cocktails uh going back to classical uh preparation techniques and and you know using better spirits all over you know all the time finding unique spirits uh to use uh and unique products like the kombucha you know which is you know probably wasn't anyone's radar now all of a sudden you start seeing some cocktails with it you know all the way to cbd so um, right. you know the the, the world in, in cocktails is definitely uh, moving forward, you know, to use the term uh, mixology. And and there's certain spots where the we've got some great bartenders that are understanding um, at cigar bars, understanding the the flavor profile of, of what the, the cigar uh, smoker can enjoy and, and, and really can relate to um, versus just, just that straight pairing of, like, I just need to have my, my whiskey neat and my cigar you can actually start to i'm not saying that's a bad thing right that's actually a great place but you can actually start to level you know up it's like i've never had a, a you know a, a gin and tonic well it's now you can have a gin and tonic with with this cigar and with this style of cigar and you can have you know a great coffee cocktail you know uh with this right. style of cigar so frank we've gone through these pairings now and i have just a couple of questions what types of things complement the palate or negatively impact the palate, possibly shocking it and making a bad experience? 
which part of that question, <laughs> that three part question, should I should I tackle first? So Go with uh, the first, we've kind of covered the compliment okay. side already. So right. may, maybe well, we should I, talk about I, the danger. I think for for most people, you know, um, a, a lot of times. Uh, if, if you think back to like probably your first cigar experience or you're hanging out with some buddies and God doesn't uh, smoke a cigar, he wants to hang out and smoke a cigar and someone hands him, you know, this super, you know, Maduro or, or you know, hardcore, you know, full bodied stick. And for the uninitiated, that's a that's a horrible experience because they probably don't return to be, being a cigar smoker. They probably gut it through and, you know, just because. You know they're they're with their boys. So, right. for, first of all, it's 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 finding that introduction to to what it is that you like. So, if it's scotch, then I would say you know start with a blended scotch. Um, so you ease your way into understanding the flavors first before jumping into like you know uh, you know a twenty five year old you know not to uh, Lafroy, which is my favorite. You know where right. where you're gonna get a big blast of of, of iodine and salt and you know and band-aid and you know the flavors that might shock someone into saying that's well, not, not pleasant for me, right. right at this point you know you right. kind of build your way to it so start with start with uh items that i think uh you know are, are introductory level it's not a bad thing it's a great thing you know right. so so if if you're not a really huge um you know bourbon guy don't start with a rye you know, these things are could be shocking because like it's too much spice on this. It's too hot. You know, to start well, with something perfect. that's a little, little, uh, you know. So, so first of all, ask. You know, and, and if you're going to experience something, you know, in a new realm, um, find find the the you know that midline entry point where where you you can um, you can enjoy the experience. You know, imagine somebody that that's not a a uh, a hoppy beer drinker being handed like a 120 minute IPA right. you know like that could be so off putting so uh, you let's know let's just start with a basic IPA start with the basics or yeah let's just start you know? with the basic and then perfect. you find out you know like oh, you know what I don't like hops I don't like hops at all great so now you know but that person might be like this monster stout or porter drinker you know right so you, you, you do know where your palate lies so you yep. know um, that that's the first thing so um but I'm also a proponent of sometimes you may need to shock yourself into discovery, you know. So there's always a time and place, you know. It's just like don't go to your favorite spot and order, you know, like yeah, I'm going to order is, you know, Same the most expensive. Yeah, and, and go go over the top and realize, hey, I'm, I don't really enjoy this, you know. Right. But from a starting point, trust your instincts. Then from there, baby steps. Always. Maybe some self-discovery in terms of where you want to go. And then at that point, at least you know what you do like. Mm -hmm. And if you try something new that you don't like, you can fall back onto something and it's still an enjoyable time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that, that's the same pattern that we use for cigars. You know, it's the same pattern of, of, that we use uh, when you're introducing something to somebody new. You know, if, right. if, they, if they, hey, I want, you know, wh how do you answer the question? I want to get started in smoking cigars, but I've never done it before. Or the last time I tried a cigar was really intense and, and gross. So w would you start them here? Would you start no. them with the plush? Or maybe you want to start them with a tobacco? You know, you, right. you kind of like would say, yeah, let's, let's start them with a tobacco. It's a great way to get introduced to, to, uh, to new experiences. The other thing that I've noticed through these three pairings here, there's almost like three components, right? There's the primary component, like for me, it was the coffee in the first one, then it was the kombucha, and then it was the tea. And then you have the same thing with the, the alcohol added, you know, the liqueur, the gin, and the uh, rum. That's the base components. But then the cool part is the two extras. So the effer effervescent, mm -hmm. so either the tonic, the kombucha, um, and then the third part would be the bitter the bitters or the syrup, syrup the simple syrup mm -hmm. so those three components now i feel like i have a baseline i have you know the drink itself mm -hmm. a simple syrup to kind of help elevate that sweetness and match that cigar and then a bitter or some sort of uh, flavor component whether it be the tea or the kombucha or the coffee that's adding more to the to the actual matching or the elevating of the experience you, you hit them all in Perfect. that order. So the, that's it, I don't it, need to folks. say anything else. You got three things to do. You got the basic drink, you got the simple syrup, and then you have 
some sort of flavor component, whether it be the bitters or kombucha or some sort of spice in there uh, that you can use to help elevate your pairing experience. Um, Frank, lastly, since I didn't partake in it, but a lot of people are, how does alcohol affect the pairing process? Well, um, alcohol, like like anything, um, is is can with with excessive amounts, you know, start to numb your palate. You know, so you 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 have to kind of temper your you know your imbibing of of either spirits. You know, and s- same thing happens with uh, with a cigar. As well, you know, you, you get to that numbing spot where, like I call, palate exhaustion. Um, so it is it is a fine line between those two. Um, so like with anything, I think you need to uh, be mindful. You know, enjoy the experience. You know, you're you we're not you know slamming down cokes. You know, right. we're um, you're trying to uh, enhance your palate. So um, always, you know, uh, enjoy the aroma of the cocktail itself. Um, you know, take small sips, you know, make sure they work their way around the mouth. You know, they're not just going straight down to the back of your throat, you know, get them into the, into the mouth. The same way that when we enjoy a a spirit by itself, you kind of do that, you know, that old bourbon, you know, that Kentucky chew, you, you want to get it in, in all the parts of your mouth. You do have uh, taste buds, not just on your tongue. They exist all over your mouth, you know, under the tongue, on the sides of your mouth. Um, Get, get the drink in there. Um, And again, Slow sips, you know, enjoy your cigar, enjoy your cocktail, enhance the experience. I mean, that, and that's really the, you know, the, the base point of, of this is just to enhance your experience. Wonderful. Very well said. Thank you all for joining us in Florida Sun Grown Tobacco Field right here in Florida. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Jay. This was a great episode. I hope you guys were able to learn a little bit of how to pair and, and set up your next drink and cigar pairing. Thanks for watching Box Press. You can find more content from Bora on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and all podcast platforms. Oh.